So um, as part of a speaker bureau presentation, I just have to talk about Jefferson Center as an agency quickly before jumping into the presentation itself. Um, so basically Jefferson Center is, um, our mission is to inspire hope, improve lives and strengthen our community providing uh, mental health and related solutions for individuals and families. Um, we have been our, the Community Mental Health Center for Jefferson, Gilpin and Clear Creek counties for over 60 years. Um, and a lot of our clients are, are people who are low income or have Medicaid for their insurance. So we, we kind of take care of more of the vulnerable populations in the, the area. Um, but along with that, we do serve everyone between children up to seniors and everything in between. Um, and we have specific populations we work with too, like veterans, um, veterans and military personnel, um, and like I said, seniors, and we off offer all sorts of different services, uh, whatever anyone's needs might be, we really most likely will be able to help them out. Um, so things like individual and group therapy, peer specialists, we have wellness classes like yoga, meditation, um, art classes, um, parenting resources. We have a bunch of school-based resources for the kiddos. Um, and then we also offer substance use treatment as well. So now that that's done, um, we'll jump into the burnout presentation. Um, so when I was putting together this presentation, I was trying to find a definition of burnout that was kind of all encompassing. And many of the definitions that I found were more related to work burnout. Um, but for me, I feel like burnout can happen in any aspect of your life. Um, so this is why I kind of liked this quote, uh, this definition from Psychology Today. It says, burnout is a state of emotional, mental, and often physical exhaustion brought on by prolonged or repeated stress. Though it's most often caused by problems at work, it can also appear in other areas of life, such as parenting, caretaking, or romantic relationships. Um, and I have down there saying to remember that being burnt out is different than being stressed out. Um, so the way I look at, at, at it is a, a certain amount of stress can actually be very motivating for you to like get things done, get things accomplished. Um, while being burnt out is kind of the polar opposite of that. Like you have so much to do and so many tasks to, to complete, but there is zero motivation to get it done. Um, so that, so a little bit of stress can be relatively healthy. Um, it can kind of give you that sense of caring still, um, but being burnt out just like kind of wipes out any sense of caring that you might have about anything. So there's the difference between those two. Um, so symptoms that you might experience with burnout, I kind of broke it down into three different categories, physical and emotional, the cynicism, detachment, symptoms that you might experience, and then ineffectiveness and lack of accomplishments. Um, what I'll preface this with is most of these symptoms will start off fairly mild, um, even to the point so mild that you could like kind of justify it or like slough it off and be like, oh, that's not a big deal. Like it's fine. I'll just keep moving forward sort of thing. Um, but then as your burnout increases, so do the symptoms, the severity of the symptoms increase as well. So I'll go through, I know you guys can read, but I'll go through these and kind of give examples of some of them while we go through them. Um, obviously the chronic fatigue, that's a big one, which, it's tough because with burnout and like the compassion fatigue that kind of parallels burnout, chronic fatigue is definitely a symptom, but then insomnia is a symptom as well. So it's, you're fighting this fatigue, you're so tired, but then at night you're so anxious and stressed out that you can't sleep. So it's like a build, this massive snowball that it eventually builds into. Um, and as we all know, sleep is incredibly important um, because it can impact all aspects of, of your health, physical and mental health. So um, those are pretty big symptoms to be dealing with. Um, forgetf forgetfulness and lack of attention. Um, kind of an example of this for kind of like the mild symptoms is like, oh yeah, I forgot to write back that email from like to my supervisor or whatever. Um, but then as it increases in severity, you start to forget projects that work all together, um, or you're scrambling and saying like, oh, I forgot the deadline, it's tomorrow. So then of course you're adding more stress to your plate and more and more uh, responsibilities kind of start to build up the, the more you forget and just 
stop caring about them. Um, anxiety and depression symptoms, those are pretty straightforward, just kind of like the kind of the panic, panic type symptoms, the, the racing heart, the sweatiness, the inability to relax, uh, the depression, just lack of enjoyment of things, um, just apathy, all, all those depression symptoms. Um, obviously, the, the more severe one would lead into more of the suicidal thoughts. And at that point, we would definitely want to get you some additional support surrounding those things. Um, loss of appetite, physical symptoms uh, like GI issues, headaches, shortness of breath. A lot of people who deal with burnout and, you know, just chronic stress, they, they talk a lot about the, the chronic stomach aches that they have. Um, and most of the time, and what I tell my clients, most of the time your stress, if you ignore it in a mental sense, um, your body's gonna to start to show it in a physical sense. Uh, so eventually your stress is gonna come out um, whether or not you want to <laughs> want it to. Um, so those, those physical symptoms are actually um, symptoms that can start pretty early on. So really check in with yourself to say like, oh, yeah, I've been having a headache like every single day and I usually don't get headaches. Like what's going on? Like do those check-ins with yourself. Um, so for the cynicism and uh, detachment, um, you know, the loss of enjoyment, just kind of the overall pessimism. Um, and that's kind of something that you can check in with yourself too. Like if you're normally a pretty positive person, but you, you find yourself being very negative and just like blah towards the world, that might be a symptom that you're starting to get burnt out. Um, isolation. This is a big one too. Um, so kind of like with how it can start in a mild sense, it's, you know, those, those missed phone calls from friends, like, uh, like I, I just don't want to talk right now. Like I'll call them back later sort of thing. But as it increases in severity, you will go to great lengths to avoid interactions with your colleagues, your friends, your family. Um, and you can actually start to find yourself getting incredibly angry when people attempt to have any interaction with you. Um, so that's a big one as well. And then the deta de detachment, um, and then for the ineffectiveness, lack of it, lack of accomplishment, the ap apathy and hopelessness, a lot of people start to lose their sense of purpose when they are burnt out. Um, they kind of get to the point of like, well, what's the point? Like, it doesn't matter what I do. Like all and all those kind of negative, hopeless type of thinking. Um, and then increased irritability, and then of course the lack of productivity and poor performance because again, like I said, your lack of motivation and your lack of caring is kind of heightened during burnout um, compared to just like normal everyday stressors. So I feel like with everything we went through in 2020 and kind of like ongoing a little bit in 2021, everyone's kind of like nodding ahead like to the symptoms like, yeah, like, <laughs> I have felt that. I've felt all of these, um, which I had too. And that's what I said at the beginning of this presentation. I have experienced burnout and those symptoms are very real and they can be very overwhelming to deal with, especially by yourself at times. Um, so if you have experienced those symptoms or if you're currently experiencing those symptoms, um, what can you do to kind of help yourself out? So the first thing you can do is identifying immediate changes that you can make. So what I recommend usually is writing things down, like all your responsibilities, all of the tasks that you need to get done, because it really helps you to organize better when you when it's written, written in front of you rather than trying to organize it just in your headspace. Um, and figure out what, what takes priority, what absolutely has to get done and look at other things to say, okay, I can reschedule this, or I can delegate this to, you know, my other colleague, um, or if it's a personal thing, um, you know, rescheduling social events, because there has to be a balance between being social and not being like too isolated, but then at the same time, not overwhelming your schedule with all the social events along with all the work tasks that you have to do. Um, talking to somebody you trust and asking for help, this is a big one. Um, I always, always recommend talking to somebody because obviously talking about how you're feeling is gonna get everything out and 
that alone is, is helpful. But then if you are able to talk to somebody you trust and ask them to kind of help you, if you're having a hard time delegating tasks or figuring out what needs to be done or what can be rescheduled, um, it, that can be really helpful to get their, their perspective on things too. Um, because one thing with burnout is you start to feel very overwhelmed incredibly easily. So even me asking you to make this list of all the things that you have to complete can feel like it's an impossible thing for you to do because of everything else you have going on, um, plus your lack of motivation too. So if you're unable to do it yourself, then, if, then this kind of is where the person you trust can come into play to, to help you with that task. Um, take back control. This kind of goes along with um, the changes that you can make, but again, figuring out where in your life you need to set some boundaries, um, whether that's within your work or within your personal life or both. Um, I know most people tend to take on a lot more than they probably should because they feel like they would be a bad employee if they didn't, or they would be a bad friend if they didn't attend every single social event that they get invited to. Um, so really figure out your boundaries and what you have control over in your life. Um, self-compassion and self-care. I am a huge advocate of self-care. Like I, that's my jam. <laughs> like I, that is the, that's definitely something I encourage my clients for every single time I meet with them because my mindset is it's not, Self-care isn't something that you should do. Self-care is something that you have to do for yourself because otherwise the perspective is, is that sooner or later your body is going to react to the stress. And at this point, at this level, you have control over implementing self-care and what that looks like and when you can do it. But when you're, if you constantly are ignoring all the, the signs and symptoms of burnout and stress for your, your body, you have no control over when your body is going to react, how it's going to react, or where it's going to react, and it can come out in a very bad way. So the way I say to my clients is, okay, would you rather take advantage of the time you have now and implement those self-care techniques to avoid potentially down the road your body reacting and you having no control over it? Because um, that's a pretty scary feeling when your body starts to kind of fight against you to say, hey, like, pay attention to me. I need some help. Um, so self-care, uh, well, I'll touch on the self-compassion first. I, we're a lot more critical of ourselves than we ever are against anyone else. Um, and we have to recognize that we're human and we can only take on so many things. Um, and what I would encourage you to do is kind of talk to yourself the way that you would talk to a friend in the same situation because more than likely you will be a lot more loving and a lot more understanding towards a friend in this situation than you are to toward yourself so kind of flip the script and pretend that you are talking to a friend um, but in, in reality you're talking to yourself um, and then self-care it's gonna look different for for everyone because everyone has different things that kind of refresh and refuel them but of course the the things like journaling exercise um Going, uh, going on walks, uh, meditating, art, all sorts of different things that you can do. So kind of figure out what fills your cup and prioritize those things. Um, and definitely prioritize exercise and sleep. Sleep is imperative um, for your mental health and your physical well-being, uh, especially that good, deep, restorative sleep, not like two hours a night, but like those six to eight hours if you're able to, because your brain needs that, those hours to kind of refresh and heal itself from all the stimulation it had during the day. Um, and then of course, exercise is super important. And it doesn't have to be hours of exercise each day. Even if it's a 10 minute walk outside, you're stimulating those feel good chemicals in your brain, the serotonin and the dopamine, um, all the while getting fresh air. So it's kind of a win-win. Um, so think about those sorts of things. Um, and then gratitude. That's another thing I really encourage my clients for, and it's really, really helpful, especially with burnout. Um, us human beings, I, I feel like we're kind of wired for being 
negative rather than positive. We view the world in a negative lens rather than a positive lens for the most part. Um, so if we are able to start our day, what I usually encourage is starting your day with three things that you're grateful for and make a list of those three things and put it somewhere that you can have just as a reminder to yourself. Um, and it doesn't have to be massive things. It could be something like, I'm grateful for my hot cup of coffee this morning. I'm grateful for the snowstorm that's coming this weekend. Um, I'm grateful for the health of my kids, whatever that might look like. But those three things each day to kind of shift your perspective into the positive. And you'll be amazed because the more frequently you do that, if you'd make it a daily practice, your brain will start to consciously look into the positive rather than immediately going to the the negative um, and that will impact your day-to-day -day life in a great way um, and then of course therapy I obviously I'm in mental health I'm a huge advocate for therapy and mental health services if you do feel like you're just doing all these things and they're just not quite helping you get past the, the burnout stage that you're experiencing seek therapy. Um, I mentioned Colorado crisis services in here I'll touch on that at the end of the presentation just so you guys know that it's a resource for you. Um, but getting professional help, it's nothing to be ashamed of and it can really help you. Um, and I would especially encourage the professional help if you are experiencing those suicidal thoughts that I had mentioned before, if you're having those depression symptoms and they're leading to, to those darker thoughts. So keep that in mind. Um, so those are things that you can do if you're experiencing burnout in the moment. But what I always like to think about is like preventative measures. So how can you prevent burnout for future reference? Um, setting boundaries is a huge one. Um, recognizing when your plate is full and not budging on your needs and, and what you can and can't take on. Um, I think 2020 really helped a lot of people recognize their boundaries. It, it, first of all, it helped us recognize how resilient we are because we uh, human beings are incredibly resilient and we can go through so many things and still make it out the other end. Um, but it also showed us, okay, like I can only take on so much at a time. And so if, if you, if 2020 was able to provide you with the boundaries for yourself, hold on to those for future because it's, I can guarantee you at some point there's going to be a lot ask, being asked of you between your social life, your work life, your personal, your own personal things that you want, want to do and just recognize when your plate is full and being able to say no is such a powerful wor word. It's incredibly uncomfortable at first when you start to say no to people when they're used to you saying yes all the time, but you'll feel relief when you you see that you're you're preventing your plate for plate for being overrun. Um, self-care again, of course, this is an ongoing practice. I try and practice something every day for self-care because um, it, it is incredible it can be incredibly preventative. Again, the gratitude, but then I also am mentioning mindfulness. And one thing I wanted to do, I know Zoom meetings can be like such a drag sometimes and it's so hard over video, but I wanted to do a, a little activity if you guys are willing. Um, you don't have to participate, but um, so the sensory activity for mindfulness, this is really, really helpful for a mindfulness practice because um, Obviously, mindfulness, and it's been a go-to word over the last five, ten years, um, is trying to be as present as possible. That's the best way to explain mindfulness, really. Um, trying to stop yourself from going into the past or thinking too much into the future because all that can cause anxiety and stress. Um, so the mindfulness practice, if you find yourself thinking ahead or going back or just like all scatterbrained, one thing that you can do is this sensory activity, which is focusing on your five senses. So you go through, you kind of take a deep breath or several deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, and look at five things that you can hear. I'm sorry, five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things that you can touch, two things you can smell, 
and then one thing that you can taste. So maybe I'll give you like a second to like go through that and I'll, I'll repeat that too. Um, again, it's going through your five senses. So it's five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can touch, and two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. So, you know, obviously for me, I can see my lamp, I can see the computer in front of me, the glow of the screen, I can see my water bottle, I can see a picture of my dogs, um, and then the, the things I can hear, I can hear the air conditioning buzzing above me, the fan of my computer going, uh, those are just some examples. The touch, I can feel my desk. I can feel the leather of my chair. I can feel the, the dryness of my hands because it's winter in Colorado and my skin is terrible right now. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what to do. Um, and it really allows your brain to kind of get back into the present moment. Um, so hopefully that's kind of helpful. And then finally, being aware of your burnout symptoms so you can intervene early. So I, for my burnout symptoms, like one of them is I, I start to get very irritable and I start to isolate. Um, so when I start to notice like, oh, like I just ignored that phone call from my mom and I usually answer and talk and have a great conversation with her whenever she calls. So when I start to recognize like those smaller, like more mild symptoms, that's when I can check in with myself and be like, okay, like is something going on that I need to do with some like extra self-care, you know, delegate some tasks. What does that look like? Um, so you can prevent it from getting more severe. And because burnout is such a heavy topic sometimes and 2020 was such a crazy year and 2021 has kind of been ongoing with it. I figured it would be a great way to end the presentation with looking at some baby animals because who doesn't love baby animals? <laughs> um, and one thing I do, I, I was going to allow for questions, but I, I wanted to touch on the, call, the crisis services that are available in the area. Um, again, so the, these are services that are available 24-7, 365. They're completely free. Um, there's several options. There's walk-in crisis centers. Um, the, there's a Colorado crisis line. There's a text option and then an online chat option through their website. Um, and it's free, it's confidential, and you'll be talking to a, a mental health professional. Um, so keep those in mind as far as resources that are available to you if you are feeling like you're needing some additional professional support. Um, and then just the Speakers Bureau through Jefferson Center, that's the, the team that I'm a part of um, or the group I'm a part of to offer these presentations. And, and that's kind of what we do, offering free presentations to community groups. Um, and the presentations are licensed professionals. I'm a licensed clinical social worker um, and we do all sorts of topics on mental health and wellness. Um, and then you can get involved with Jefferson Center if you're wanting to get more involved. There's, there's that website there if you're interested in that. Um, but other than that, do you guys have any questions? Well, I have a question. Oh, sure. <laughs> So you great you gave some great examples of uh, mindfulness, which I think was really really great, and about the journaling. Um, I was curious: is there any self care practices that you do, Megan, that really work well for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have a nine month old daughter at home, so like sleep is still kind of like not. <laughs> greatest at this point, but before her, I absolutely prioritize sleep for myself. I need like a solid eight hours to feel like I'm functioning and, and on my, my game a bit. Um, but, but for the time being, I, I definitely exercise. I take my dogs on a walk every single day, no matter what the weather is, because I know it, it's a positive thing for them and it makes me feel good to help get their energy out. And then it, it stimulates the, those chemicals in, in my brain to make me feel good. Um, and then I 
with the working from home for like for 2020 since I was doing it as, as well, I'm finally back in the office. But uh, one thing that I did is I made sure to like get up and kind of keep my routine. Um, I like put my makeup on, I drink my coffee, I get got up at the same time about each day. Um, so those things kind of kind of kept me on track with my self care too. Thanks, Megan, for sharing. That's yeah. always helpful to have more examples. I saw that we had two hands raised. Corey, I saw you took your hand down. Did you still have a question or comment? I did, actually. Um, I was actually in a meeting yesterday that uh, they talked about this very topic, and thanks for covering it, Megan. And one of the things that was said was that, you know, when a baby comes out of the womb, uh, you know, basically it's fighting for oxygen. And it's one of the simplest things that we can do is just, you know, focus on that. Um, and so one thing that I've done is uh, think about oxygen. And one thing I got was an air filter. And also um, Erica Holly's love for plants made me get a basil plant. So <laughs> that's that awesome. was, yeah, that was one thing. And then, you know, thinking about how much water I drink during the course of a day and being in Colorado, I got a water filter and uh, those two things alone, setting those boundaries uh, really helped. Yeah, no, that's amazing that you're able to implement those things for yourself. Because yeah, water and oxygen, those are like basic needs, but a lot of people kind of forget about them. So it's it's great that you're you're doing that for yourself. That's awesome, Corey. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I think that it's a good reminder of remembering even just the basics. Uh, Abigail, I see that you have your hand raised. Yeah, I was just kind of curious as to how you tell, like, when you know that you've crossed the line into burnout instead of just it being justifiable stress every day. Because I, that's the problem that I think I know I have is I try to justify everything that's going on in my life. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, like, how do you know when you've crossed that line um, instead of just saying, oh, I'm stressed out. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I didn't get enough sleep last night. That's why. So I think... One thing, like I mentioned, is with burnout versus just everyday stress is burnout, you completely lose like any type of motivation and caring um, because with stress, like when I'm stressed, like I, I, yes, I'm stressed, but I still like have that energy in me to be like, okay, like I need to get this done. Like I'm excited. Like I, I want to get this project done. I'm excited about it. I know I'm going to be helping people with it, but with burnout, it's almost like, for an example, like, uh, like, well, what's the point of doing this work project? Like, it, I, it's just another one I have to do. It's not making an impact. It's just like all those negative talk that you start to have in yourself. Um, and it's hard because we do tend to justify the symptoms that we have because it's like, oh, well, I've been cranky before. It's probably nothing. Like I'm probably just like a little tired. I didn't sleep very well last night, but I think it's just like the cumulative of all those symptoms coming into play um, that can really push you into the, the, the side of burnout, if that makes sense. I have a question. Well, I feel like I'm going through this right now. I, for the past week, and I'm doing all of these self-care things, right? I get up every morning, I go to the gym and exercise. I walk outside every day. I drink plenty of water. I meditate every night. Like I'm doing all of these things to be my best self. Mm -hmm. But then when I come to the computer to work, and this has really been like the last week, I just kind of shut down and I'm like, I don't feel like it or I'll do it later or, you know, like feeling, uh, I don't know if it's feeling like failure or if it's feeling like I've already put it off this long. Like why start now, even though I have to get it done. Yeah. It's like, there is no choice in the matter. I have to do it. It's just like, I'm already past the point of no return. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if you have any suggestions for that. Well, I think when it kind of gets to that point, like when you're, you're doing all your self-care stuff, like you're doing everything that you can, that, that makes you feel good outside of work. And then you get to work. Um, that's kind of when I, I'm wondering if it'd be possible to have those conversations with your boss to like delegate some tasks away from yourself to like kind of unload a little bit, because maybe you're just have so much going on at work that, like you said, it's like, ugh, like, I don't even want to like deal with it sort of thing. Um, so I'm wondering if, if that might be a conversation you can have. And with I have 
then I mean I have had that conversation out. I mean, here's my therapy session in front of all of you. <laughs> um, even talking it out is, you know, like helping me figure out, okay, what, you know, do I need to get in order? Um, maybe even just admitting it because this is the first time I've actually talked about it with other people. Um, you know, being able to kind of just make goals and even if they're small, like be able to cross them off as I go and just start small. Yeah, so Maybe absolutely. that's what I'll do after the meeting. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds like a great plan. And, and I think, like I mentioned in my presentation, writing down everything that you have to do really helps like to get everything on paper to figure out, okay, like these are things I absolutely 100% have to get done. These are things that I maybe don't have to get done right now. I can reschedule or like I said, like delegate to somebody else or just put off for the time being. Um, and I think just having it written down on paper really helps to kind of organize your your brain because sometimes it just gets like too much and it gets scrambled up in your head. So being able to write it down um, and you're right, just talking about it can be so therapeutic and just getting it off your chest to say, Hey, I think I'm going through this and I need some extra help and, and that's okay. And it's awesome. I'm glad you're talking about it. Um, and so hopefully, you know, being able to do your, thanks everyone for listening. <laughs> Well, if Amy, you have some support in chat, um, individuals who really think it's a really great idea. Kelsey said that she loves your idea of the list it's and checking out those accomplishments. And Abigail, she's really feeling you on, you know, being burnt out at work. And then, you know, something I saw in chat too, Megan, was, you know, just the idea that it's kind of scary as a young professional to be experiencing burnout for us because like, you know, you think about it, you're a young professional and you're already experiencing burnout and you're supposed to have 20, 30, 40 more years, right, of working. So I, yeah. I Ooh, it's I'm really so valuable nice. to have you here. <laughs> um, I saw, Melissa, that you originally had your hand up. Did your question get answered or did you still have something bigger? Um, no, I always have questions. <laughs> um, but I, first of all, I love this topic. Thank you so much for coming and doing this. I think it's yeah. so Yeah. Um, so how do you, like, how would you explain to us or what is the best way? Because people get overwhelmed by their schedules and work and trying to prove themselves as a young professional. Like, what is the best way to practice mindfulness on a daily basis? Is it scheduling it? Is it like, what, what would you suggest? for all yeah. this, like, how do we do all that? Yeah. Um, so I think, so at, at least initially, when you start the practice of mindfulness, it has to be a very conscious effort because it does not come naturally to us. Like we, for us humans, especially with how busy all of our lives are, it's, it's just constantly go, 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 go. So you have to actually, and it, Honestly, like scheduling it is a great recommendation because it, it, it's holding yourself accountable to like take even just two, three minutes out of your day just to take that deep, those deep breaths, do that sensory activity if you need to. You don't necessarily necessarily have to. I just find it to be helpful to kind of like center myself a bit. Um, just take those few minutes each day and hold yourself accountable on your schedule to do it. Um, and then eventually, the more you do it, the more practice you have with it, the more of a natural thing it will become. And within your busy day, you can start to do it even when you're driving your car or in the middle of a meeting even because sometimes that's the time, only time we have for it. Um, and that's the great thing about mindfulness too, is it, it doesn't necessarily take, a, it doesn't take away from what you're doing in the moment. Like if you do mindfulness practice within a meeting, it actually makes you more present to hear what's being spoken in the meeting. So it's not, it doesn't take away from anything. Um, so yeah, to, to kind of answer your question, sorry, a little rabbit trail there. Um, I think scheduling it is a, it's a great way to, to implement the practice initially until it becomes more of a, of a just a muscle memory thing. Yeah, that's awesome. I really appreciate it. It's, it's hard to be like, I'm a mom of three kids and running my own mm -hmm. business. So I think, I just love this. I think it's so important to do this. So, yeah. so are you for hire? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the tips and what a great question, Melissa. I just wanted to share in chat, we have Robert, who shared that they found that midday exercise is really helping them refocus and reset their brain and emotions and really coming back 
energized and ready to work. And then I saw that Megan seconded that. She said that, you know, taking a midday break, however that is, really is a great moment for refocus and productivity. Yeah. It also makes me more positive if I'm like in a negative headspace because I'm just like tired of whatever's going on. Like even walking the dog counts as exercise. So mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't emphasize Megan's uh, presentation more. No, and I love that idea of kind of breaking your day up with with the exercise or walking the dog because yeah, it, it kind of resets your your mindset a, a bit. So I I, like, I really like that recommendation. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this. I felt like I was trying to do too many things that are positive, like meditate, exercise, podcast, music, walk. Like then I was like stressing myself out about doing all of the things you're supposed to be doing. Oh, yeah. So it's like been hard trying to figure out which works and which resonates and, and what causes stress and what doesn't. So I've, I thought I was a podcaster where I was supposed to be like, you know, on my walk, I would listen to a podcast and I felt that I came back more stressed. Mm -hmm. So I started to do no podcasts and just listen to music um, on the walk. So that's definitely helped. I don't know if anyone else has suffered from like must do all the positive things at once, but I have for sure. Yes. I can, I can relate to that as well, Christine. It's like, and I've, I've heard about this and it's a journey, I guess, of ex exploring ourselves and the journey of understanding ourselves more at a deeper level. But something I've tried to be more conscious around, and this is connecting around Megan's message, is if we had a jar, which, and we have all these different sized stones, well, let's put the biggest stones in first and let the small ones then fill in the gaps. And so it's really knocking those things out of the most meaningful for me first to win the day, um, which is something that I know I put a focus on. Do I do it every day? Probably not. Actually, I know I don't, but it's it's more of that effort. Yeah, and you're right, Christine, as far as I, I think a lot of people experience that, like, okay, I have to do everything, like, in a positive light and do everything, like, great and be healthy and happy all the time. It's like, no, you can't, like, you just can't, like, it's just not realistic. And, it, you know, honestly, sometimes just sitting in front of the TV and numbing out for a bit is completely fine too. You don't always have to like actively be doing something positive, like exercising 30 hours a day and not 30 hours a day. That wouldn't even make sense. But um, like, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of shoving and filling your schedule with all these positive things. Cause at some point those positive things can start to be stressor, just like you said. So, you know, finding that balance and it's a, it's kind of a, hit or miss sort of thing, like figuring out like what works for you and what doesn't. Um, but yeah, I, I totally get it. And, and like I said, don't, don't be scared to just sit in front of the TV and like numb out for a bit because that's completely fine too. So I know I'm sure all the health gurus out there would are like lose their minds if they heard me say this, but truly it's fine. <laughs> And Christine, you know, uh, Melissa shared that she was experiencing something like that to try and pack a lot in with positivity. And her therapist was telling her that she actually was taking in too much at once and really suggested just adding like one type of positive thing for 30 days could still really help you actually stretch that positivity muscle. So you're not alone. I think we all try and do a lot as young professionals and we sometimes overstimulate ourselves. So just know we're all feeling it in some way too. Uh, Corey, I saw your hand up. Did you have a comment or question? Yeah, I was going to not say something and keep it to myself, but I felt like saying something. Um, not to sound like an old man, but it's sort of an interesting, uh, you know, I, I sort of came through the no cell phone to cell phone thing. And I was actually thinking about all of the things that everyone's been saying. And I've noticed that we sort of like turning into this, you know, like we're sort of always reaching for a signal, you know, and, and it's like, to Christine's point, you know, trying to do more and meditate with, you know, more cell phone and more um, computer. To me, it almost sounds like maybe we need to look at how, you know, who's a tool of who is, is our technology the one kind of commanding us? Or are we commanding our technology? You know, are we operating you know, for our, you know, internet connection, our connection to the world, 
or is it you know the opposite way around and and how can we intervene or set boundaries to that relationship that's a great point thank you Corey, for bringing that perspective to the table thomas i see your hand up Yeah, I have a question for Megan, and I was late, so my apologies if you already went over this. Um, what do you help coach people towards when in feeding the positive side of our brain rather than negative, right? We, we definitely have both, but what are some actionable items, right, to start feeding that, that positive self for folks out there? Yeah, so one of the big things I think is the, the gratitude practice, and I don't know if you were here for that or not, but... Um, basically focusing on three things each day, starting your day with three things that you're grateful for. And I mentioned like, if they don't have to be massive things, they can be smaller items like your cup of coffee or, you know, the sun is shining or you, you got to see the sunrise, whatever that might look for, um, look like for you. Um, and then writing those down. And even if you'd like just carrying around the list with you for the day, like posting on your computer or putting it in your car if you're driving around through the day as a reminder, like a, just that constant reminder to say like, I'm grateful. I have good things in my life because we, unfortunately, we are wired for the negative for the most part and our brains tend to automatically go to the negative. Um, so I think starting that practice and again, even like the mindfulness practice, it, it does take a conscious effort uh, because our brains are wired that way. Um, but eventually, if you do it on a consistent basis for a long enough time, then your brain will actually start to automatically go to the positive rather than the negative. Um, and then just in general, consciously scanning for the positive in your environments, because again, we're we tend to think negatively for the most part. So as you're driving home, even scanning for something that's positive, like, oh, the sun, the sunset, like I, I'm see, being able to see the sunset on my drive home. Like that's amazing. And just like recognizing all the, the good things in your life. And you can set aside time to, to go through that. And like, I do that usually on my drive home. I think that's just a good way to one kind of decompress from the day and like separate myself from work to get into my home life. Um, but then it's a good shift in my perspective too, to say like, okay, what good things happened today? And like, what good things are happening now that I'm experiencing like the sunset or whatever you're seeing, if, if that helps a little. If I can piggyback off that real quick. Um, one thing that I've done too, when I find myself that I'm like in a, a low point and I need to like constantly remind myself to be grateful, I'll put a post-it on my mirror in the bathroom and put, I am grateful for dot, dot, dot. And so then when I go in the bathroom first thing in the morning, I'm like, I yeah. come up with things in that moment to remind me. And then anytime I go in the bathroom, I can like remind myself to be grateful for something, yeah. um, which helps train your brain in that way too. But there's like so many different things that I've read you can do, but that one really helped me. So I just figured I would throw that out there. Yeah. That's like the cutest thing I've ever heard, Amy. <laughs> that is really cute. What a great idea. This has been such a great conversation. Were there any other thoughts or questions before we transition into introductions and announcements? All right, well, let's give uh, Megan a huge thank you for imparting us with some really valuable knowledge. Thanks, guys. It was a great conversation. It was good to meet everyone. You too. And uh, with that, I'll let Madison take the stage for a second so that we can kick off with announcements and introductions.